Hi ladies, today we're going to put um, most of chapter seven together. So this last lesson actually comes from lesson 7.8. So it adds on to what we did last time, which was factoring by grouping. And this time we're gonna talk about factoring polynomials completely. So these are some steps to go through when you're given a polynomial and it doesn't necessarily say factor by grouping, factor the trinomial with a leading coefficient. These are some steps that are gonna help you um, figure out how to best completely factor that polynomial, okay? So these are the four steps that you're gonna follow. So you may wanna pause this video and write these steps in your notes, write them on a little note card somewhere where you can put some stars um, next to this, put a box around it, highlight it. These are some important steps just to start to have in your mind when you're asked to factor something. So the first thing that you wanna look for is you wanna look at all of the terms of the polynomial to first see if there's a greatest common factor of all the terms that you can pull out. So that is the first thing that you wanna look for and the first thing that you're going to do when you're factoring. Now, there might not be a greatest common factor of all the terms, but that's the first thing that you wanna check. Um, the next thing that you wanna look for um, whether you've already pulled out a greatest common factor or you're just looking at the polynomial, um, is it a difference of two squares where you can factor it down to um, this one, for instance, would be x plus 6 times x minus 6. So that could save you a lot of time if you're able to quickly recognize that you're looking at a difference of two squares. Um, the next thing that you want to look for is, is this a trinomial, binomial, four-term polynomial? Um, if it's a binomial, you've pretty much already gone through the steps of factoring it with one and two. So if you have a trinomial, what you're gonna do is you're gonna use the two methods that we've learned, um, depending on whether or not the trinomial has a leading coefficient. So remember, if it has a leading coefficient, you have to factor those, um, you have to factor the, <laughs> factor the factors of um, that leading coefficient in to your factoring method. And then that would be when that four column chart method uh, would come in handy, okay? And then for um, finally, if your polynomial has four terms, what you're going to look to do is to factor that polynomial by grouping. So remember, sometimes you have to rearrange the terms to find a GCF, right? To end up with that same binomial in parentheses. So it might not necessarily be in the order that you want it when you're factoring. So um, that's the first thing that you want to do is you want to get, you want to try getting those, um, you can really start by getting them into standard form where your exponents are in decreasing order. But again, look to rearrange those terms if you don't come up with a GCF in the, um, on your first attempt. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through some examples. So let's look at example A. All right, and the first thing that we want to look for is does this example, do each of these terms have a greatest common factor? And the first thing that I notice is that each of the coefficients, right, is a multiple of three. So we're going to start by bringing a three out front. Okay, and then the next thing that we want to look at is our variables. So do each of these terms have a variable in common? And what we can do is we can take one X out of each of those terms. Okay, so our greatest common factor is three X. And then let's see what we're left with in our parentheses. So if we divide three X cubed by three X, what we get is X squared. So remember when you divide variables, when you divide exponents, you subtract. Okay, so 6x squared divided by 3x leaves us with just a 2x. Okay, and then we're going to take our negative 18x divided by 3x, and what we get is a negative 6. All right, so we're not done. So now we have to further factor this piece that's left in... Um, the parentheses. So we're going to bring down our 3x because that remains one of our factors. And now what we want to do is we want to think of factors of negative 6 
that will add up to positive 2. Okay, so some factors of 6, negative 6, that will add up to positive 2. So we could have um, negative 3, positive 2. We could have, and those two will not add up to positive 2. We could have negative 2, positive 3, and those are not going to add up to positive 2. Then we want to look at negative 6, positive 1. Okay, that does not add up to negative 2, and then we want to look at negative 1 and positive 6. So what I'm seeing here is that this trinomial is not factorable. So what you do in that case is, right, you just leave that as your other factor in the parentheses. And that is your answer for that problem, okay? All right, let's look at another example. So we have 7x to the fourth minus 28x squared, okay? And what I'm noticing is that both of these are multiples of 7, so let's bring out a 7. And then we have x to the fourth, and then we have x squared. So we can actually take an x squared out of both of these terms. Okay, what that leaves me with here is 7 divided by 7 is 1 x to the fourth divided by x squared leaves us with an x squared. Okay, and then minus 28x squared. So if we divide negative 28x squared by 7x squared, what we get is a negative 4. And what I'm noticing here is that in our parentheses, right, what we're left with is a difference of two squares. So we have 7x squared, and when we factor a difference of two squares, what we get is right, x plus the square root of this number, which is 2, times x minus the square root of this number, which is 2. So um, for B, this would be your answer. This would be the fully factored form of that binomial. Okay, so let's look at this example, um, letter C. And what we have is we have negative 15D cubed plus 21D squared minus 6D. So what I'm noticing is that each of these coefficients is a factor of, or sorry, a multiple of three. And because we have that negative sign out front, what we wanna do is we wanna not bring out a positive three, but a negative three, so that we end up with a positive number um, as our leading coefficient. Okay, so what else I'm noticing is that we can take a D out of each of these terms, okay? So negative three D is our greatest common factor. What that leaves us with here is 5d squared plus, or not plus, sorry about that. That is a minus because we're dividing by a negative. So minus 7d and then um, negative 6d divided by negative 3d just leaves us with a plus 2. Okay. So what we have here is we have a trinomial and we have a leading coefficient. So we're going to have to do factors of A, factors of C, put our factors in this column, and then we want to see what our um, middle term is. I'm just going to abbreviate like that just for time's sake. 
All right, so some factors of A. So in this case, our A is the 5, okay, and our C is the 2. So that'll help us kind of distinguish between that. So some factors of A, and since it's positive, and since C is positive, that makes things a little easier for us. Okay, the thing to notice, however, is that our middle term is a negative. So what that means is we are going to need um, two negative factors for our C. So A, we're gonna look at one and five, and for C, we can start with negative one, negative two. Okay, so what that gives us is, that gives us, and we have a D, so that gives us, um, I'm just gonna write it over here, that gives us D plus, oh, one D plus negative one, sorry about that. And then 5D minus 2. And let's see what that gets us. Um, I'm just going to erase that to get rid of some confusion. So we're going to look at our outer and our inner terms. And what we get is negative 2D and negative 5D. So we actually get our negative 7D middle term from that first attempt. So the factored form of this equation is D minus one times 5D minus two. So let's rewrite that to get the fully factored form of this equation. And that was a one. Okay, so we have our negative 3D, can't get rid of that. And then um, we have 1D minus one. And then 5D minus two. Okay, so that is the fully factored form of this original equation, right? That one was slightly time consuming. Imagine how much more time consuming it would have been if we had to try more values of A and C, but luckily we got it on the first try. Um, okay, so last example would be letter D. Okay. So we, what we have, right, is we have a four-term polynomial. So the first thing that I wanna look for is, do these four terms have a greatest common factor? And they do not. So then the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to try to solve these by grouping, okay? So this is my first group. This is my second group. All right, so for my first term, Right, let's pull out a greatest common factor. So the greatest common factor that I see here is just a b squared. And if I take a b squared out of each of those terms, right, b to the third divided by b squared is just b. And then negative five b squared divided by b squared just leaves us with negative five. Okay, and remember we have a plus in the middle here. And then let's look at these terms. Um, so a greatest common factor of four and 20 is four. But since this is a negative value on my first term here, what I wanna do is I actually wanna factor out a negative four instead of a positive four, okay? So what that leaves me with is negative four B divided by negative four just leaves me with B. And then positive 20 divided by negative four is negative five, all right, which is nice. So now we have 
this guy in parentheses. 